next, the dollar could be ready for a rebound against the euro. That's the word from some of the currency strategists with the best record of predicting the dollar's value so far this year. They see the dollar strengthening as much as 17 percent in the second half of 2009. Well, oh, why? Well, they expect the U.S. economy to recover from the recession faster than Europe. Deutsche Bank says it expects to see the greenback at $1.20 per euro by year's end. That would be the strongest we've seen the dollar since 2006. For more on the dollar, we turn to Mark Chandler, global head of currency strategy at Brown Brothers Harriman. Throughout the economic crisis, Mark has been an advocate of the greenback, and his book, Making Sense of the Dollar, published by Bloomberg Press, will be out by late July. Mark joins us from downtown Manhattan. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, the you. Bank of Japan Japan's going to be releasing that tank and survey midweek. What do you expect to hear? Well, this is what we expect from Japan. The economy is in horrible shape. In fact, even though it doesn't have the subprime problem, the Japanese economy contracted about three times deeper, or three times more than the U.S. has contracted after several quarters of this Tankan survey, which is a survey of, of businesses in Japan. Four quarters in a row it's been contracting at a rapid pace. It literally fell off a cliff in the middle of last year. We look for a small bounce back, uh, but still deeply negative numbers, still deeply in a contraction mode, but somewhat better than it has been. How's that going to affect the dollar? Well, we're seeing dollar-yen go above its 200-day moving average today. Uh, we look for this, uh, the dollar to continue to move higher against the Japanese yen, maybe even closer to uh, 100 again. Tell us how uh, the 200-day moving average is your benchmark. Why should people be more, uh, d more cognizant of that? Well, I think that, you know, we've got to be clear that there's different segments of the market. There's some people who are trading intraday. 200-day moving average won't mean much to them. Yeah. However, for medium and longer-term traders, the 200-day moving average is sort of like just like a, a special like mile marker. It just tells you relatively how we are. And when a currency like an equity gets above its 200-day moving average, people use that to mean of a bull market or a sign of a, of a strong underlying trend. And just gets to the point how weak the yen is. Even though the uh, sterling is trading there the best levels for the year, the euro is trading well above 140 again. Again. And I think that uh, seeing that the dollar is making new highs against the Japanese yen just reveals uh, the weakness of the yen. This is Jean-Claude Trichet and his colleagues at the European Central Bank scheduled to meet this week. What are you expecting out of that? And I, I say that out of the backdrop of, of criticism that Mr. Trichet and the ECB and other central banks around the world have received in this global economic downturn. The criticism has been, where's the exit strategy? Do you have one? And are you going to let us know what it is? I think the, the most important thing from this week's ECB meeting is some details about their own type of quantitative easing, which of course they don't call it that, uh, but they're going to be buying about 60 billion euros worth of covered bonds. These are asset-backed securities, but the, the, the uh, asset actually still stays on the bank's balance sheet. Covered bonds have not defaulted in a couple of hundred years' history. Uh, we're going to get more details on that. But I think it's very important about this exit strategy. Last week, the ECB made one, mo one year of money available for the first time. Roughly $600 billion was made available to, the, uh, to over 1,000 banks. And I think that this is, illustrates their exit strategy. This financing is done for a year. Right. Meanwhile, the U.S. government and the Federal Reserve is buying long-term securities, uh, treasuries, mortgage-backed securities. It's easier to conceive of the exit strategy in the ECB, where they're doing some short-term financing even a year, right. compared to the long-term assets that the Federal Reserve is buying. Do you think that the U.S. deficit is going to push the dollar down for long? Well, I don't, I don't think that the U.S. deficit's really driving the dollar down. I think that what'll have to, it's sort of like what Ronald Reagan said. Remember Reagan? He gave us tax cuts, military spending, and social spending. And he was asked, Mr. President, what are, you, what are we going to do with this big deficit? And he said it was big enough to take care of itself. Well, Mr. Reagan also said trust but verify, if I'm trust not mistaken, verify, as well. Yeah. Uh, but I, so I think what this means is, yes, we've got a big budget deficit in the U.S. Uh, we're going to have a big budget deficit next year as well. But I think that the key is the exit strategy, like you said before. And I think that if the U.S. is the first economy out, we could be the, out of the recession. We can be among the first economies to scale back on the, on the uh, programs. And in fact, that's exactly what the Federal Reserve announced last week, that even though it was cutting some programs, some of the lending facilities, it was extending some others to February 1st, and it hoped that right. it wouldn't have to extend these programs any further. So I think we're seeing not a, uh, not a mad rush for the exit, but a slow preparation for the markets of policymakers pulling back on some of that emergency funding, that, which we no longer really need. Right. So should investors be bullish on the dollar? I'm bullish a dollar because I think that the U.S. economy is, is going to be the first out. I think that many global investors are underweight U.S. assets like our stocks and our bonds. Right. And I think that with a smaller current account deficit, we're less dependent on foreign financing. We can do more of the heavy lifting ourselves. What about China's conflicting statements on the dollar? Does that give you cause for concern? 
Well, I think that I don't know why it is when, when it comes to U.S. politicians, we know when they're lying because their lips move. <laughs> uh, right? But somehow we think that the Chinese officials, whenever they talk, we've got to take them at face value. I think what's more important than what the Chinese are saying is what they're doing. And what they're doing is this. They increased their Treasury holdings by almost 40 percent in the second half of last year. Well, last week they were pushing for a new international currency. Well, I say this is their declaratory policy. This is what they say. Right. What they're doing is different. They're still buying Treasuries. And in fact, just today, the head of the, uh, the State Administration of Foreign Exchange, SAFE, said that they're not maybe having any rapid changes in reserves, right. and they still recognize the dollar as the key trading vehicle. So I think that a lot of this is meant to be political rhetoric to deflect criticism of China having a still a large trade surplus, and for all practical purposes, right. their currency has become repegged for a year now to the U.S. dollar. That is moving in less than 1% band. And Mark, we're going to have to leave it there. Mark Chandler, right. Global Thank Head you. of Currency Strategy at Brown Brothers Harriman. Thanks.